a mug to sum up my life. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing my March favorites for you. I'm kind of doing it slightly vloggy style like last time. So I've just been putting on my makeup, watching the Anna Edits Beauty Declutter while I do it. But I thought I would pause because this is my first favorite that I wanted to talk about for the month. It's a product I picked up on my travels when I was going to New Zealand. I was at the Chanel counter. I really wanted to get their cream bronzer, but they just don't stock it at the airport. So I can never find it. So I might just have to go to like an actual department store to buy it. But while I was there, I remember remember Anna from the Anna Edit talking about the new Ombre Premier eyeshadows. So these are like the new version of the Illusion d'Ombre eyeshadows that they used to have back in the day. I took French for a year, I should know how to pronounce it. But anyway, these are the Ombre Premier shadows and I picked up the shade Silver Screen. I did really enjoy the eyeshadow but this product I loved and this was such an impulse buy. It's their cream highlighter. So the packaging is just a nice sleek black tube with the Chanel logo on the end. I used to not be the biggest fan of cream highlighters but this summer I've really embraced them. I found a couple that I really like. For example the Living Luminizer by RMS Beauty. I love that one. But this one is so beautiful. This is the Balm Essential Multi-Use Stick and it's called Sculpting. And when I first saw the name, before actually looking inside, I thought this would be a contouring stick because they also had a like translucent shade, which seemed to be the highlighter, but this is actually still a highlighter. The difference between the two is that sculpting has a tiny little bit of iridescence in it, whereas transparent just, just gloss. However, when they were actually swatched, I found them to be very, very similar. They looked very similar on the skin because I was like putting a little bit on at the airport. And actually after I bought this, I saw Anna from the Anna Edit talking about this in her like new and beauty video and she really liked this one as well in the sculpting shade. So the way I like to apply it is to rub a little bit on my finger and then just tap it on where I want it to go. Usually quite a bit on my cupid's bow because I think that just looks absolutely beautiful. This will give you an absolutely like wet shine to the skin. It just looks kind of almost oily but like in a nice way. And then I like to put a little bit on the tops of my cheekbones as well. Now make sure you stay in focus you little bum. I don't know if you can see. Hopefully my camera's not going out of focus because I'm not facing the front. <laughs> but you can see it just adds a really nice wet shine. What this reminds me of is the Ciate Dewy Stick, I think it was called. And I tried that a while ago and I just didn't get along with it because I found that it just disrupted my makeup underneath too much. Whereas this gives the effect of that. It gives that wet, glossy look, but it doesn't seem to disrupt my makeup as much. So I find it to be a lot easier to use. I think as long as you apply it with your fingers or even a sponge, you could use like a beauty sponge and just dab it on. But I wouldn't go in straight with the stick because you will move your base around. And now the next favorite for me for this month. Oh, it's a little bit hard to get into. <laughs> but it's the NARS Skin Deep Palette. This did get sent to me in PR. Now I want a bit of a discussion. Disclaimer. I'm not sure necessarily where, whether I would recommend the whole palette as a whole for something that I love, but there's a couple of shades that I specifically love. I adore NARS single eyeshadows. I actually have this shade here, Bali, in a single. So I'm hoping that you can buy this shade in a single because it's amazing. It's called Centerfold and it is one of the most beautiful lid colors. And I also really like this transition shade down here. This is called Undressed, I believe. So I'm actually going to put a little bit of that in my crease with a fluffy brush. I've definitely not really experimented with some of these warmer shades. They're just not really my cup of tea. NARS eyeshadows in general, I get along with really well. I find they work very well for me and my technique and my brushes and stuff. And there's a couple of shades in this palette that I just think are lovely. Really nice, like neutral neutrals. Not too cool, but not too warm either. And then I take a slightly smaller brush. This is the Hourglass number four brush. The other brush is a Hakuhodo brush. If you want to know about my favorite brushes, the last video of my Ana Rewards series at the end of last year, I do a video where I use a lot of my favorites in action as well as talk about my favorite brushes. So definitely check out that video if you're keen to get a little bit more info on my brushes as well as like links to the products. I'm going to use a bit of Bali, which as I say is the one that I have a single of. Absolutely love it. I've talked about it before. I'm just going to apply a little bit of that right here in the crease just to like deepen that slightly. And then I've actually been enjoying applying the centerfold color with my finger. So I just take my ring finger, sort of press it onto the eye like that. I find that it gives a really nice pigmentation and it's such a beautiful kind of cool toned shimmery brown, almost like with a bit of taupe in there. It's not really a shade I think I'd wear on its own. I do feel like it's deep enough that I sort of need to put a little something in the crease as you've sort of seen. I'm just deepening that up with barley again but it's still light enough to sort of wear day to day. You don't feel like you've got this really intense smoky eye on. Another favorite of mine this month have been my little Ana Luisa earrings. She did a sponsored video earlier in the month for this company. But this video is not sponsored at all. I just really wanted to include them as a favorite. I've been wearing these earrings so much. I also got some little gold sleepers that I really love for more like 
casual, day to day. Although to be honest, I still whip these out as well because I can actually play violin with them. I'm not sure how it works because usually earrings like this rattle, but I think they just sit in the perfect way that my chin rest it like just doesn't quite hit, which I'm so stoked about because I love them. And especially if I'm just wearing like what I'm wearing today, I'm just like wearing a plain t-shirt with jeans. I just think it really helps to kind of elevate my outfit from being very casual to something a little bit more like semi-glam. And I just think they're so pretty. Such an unusual design as well. I've got them in another color if you like this design specifically. Definitely, I think statement earrings are becoming kind of my thing. You know what I'm missing though? My glasses, that's why I look different. My specs. <laughs> And some of my other fashion favourites this month has been this jumper which I got from Yes Style. I think I got this back in February, might have even been January. It's just a little grey cardigan, it's slightly cropped or it's not like a long line one. And it is just made out of acrylic but it's super warm, I find it to be quite cosy. I love it because I can wear it really casually like this but I've also worn it over top of like nice dresses. Alex thought it looked really bougie, <laughs> it was quite funny. So it's a really versatile little piece, I love the colour as well because it really pulls out the cool tones in my skin. And the other fashion favourite I've been loving this month are my mules, my nice nude mules. So I got these from Windsor Smith. They're exactly what I was looking for. I wanted a pair of nude mules that were like a medium height heel, so not super high, but not like low. And I am just absolutely in love with these. I think they look really nice with an outfit like this. It's just sort of kind of casual, but smart. The heel really lifts it as well, especially with these more blingy accessories. I wrote down a couple of TV shows and things that I've been really enjoying. So this month, Queer Eye released their third season and I adore that show. That show is just all the feels. If you want to have a good cry and just feel a little bit better about humanity, then definitely watch Queer Eye. It's amazing. I'm old enough to remember the original show as well. Like me and my mum actually used to watch it. When my parents first divorced, I went and lived with my mum alone. It was just me and her and it was a really hard time for like, you know, both of us, but especially for my mum. And I just have these really fond memories of us eating chicken nuggets and salad and Diet Coke and we'd watch Queer Eye and then we'd watch Rove, which was like an Australian talk show host. I don't even know if Rove's still around, but he was cool. But that show has such special memories because it was kind of the thing that like me and mum sat there and watched and we loved it. And at the time that was called Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. But now it's just like Queer Eye for anyone. And I guess I've got a little attachment to that as well. And I'd say the other thing that I've been watching a bit this month is actually Harry Potter. I'm re-watching all the movies and even if I don't have enough time to sit and watch a whole movie in an evening, I've been watching like half and then I'll come back and watch the next half and the next evening that I have some time free, particularly if I'm eating dinner. And when you live alone, you do find yourself wanting to watch more TV, I feel, and more YouTube when I'm eating meals, which is a bit sad. Like, I just feel like sitting down at my dinner table by myself is a bit boring, unless I'm talking to you guys as well. Sometimes I'll set up my camera and talk and vlog and that really helps make me feel a little bit less lonely but also just sitting there and indulging in some good TV and movies and I love the Harry Potter series. I'm up to the seventh movie now. Just finished Half-Blood Prince last night. I watched the whole thing because I was just having a day. And that's something else I want to talk about. It's now March or it's the end of March and I'll be really honest with you guys like my mental health always takes a bit of a plummet in March. I call it my March melancholy. <laughs> it tends to come around each year because we're, we're heading into the cooler months now. Usually in March as well it's like kind of getting back to real life following summer um, even though my summer was packed with my PhD stuff it was so self-motivated it was really like I, I had so much autonomy over my own work while that can be a struggle obviously I also feel like that's actually how I do my best work. I love having full autonomy over my own work and since coming back from my trips away I've actually been thrown into a lot of projects and things that I've got to get done that involve a lot of other people. So I feel like I'm being torn in multiple directions that can really raise my anxiety and when my anxiety is up high all the time it can kind of cause me to be a little bit suffocated and then I don't know I'm just getting tired or I can feel my body just is just just really tired and I start to get a little bit low mood. If I'm not careful it can become depression like it has the last two years. I've had really bad like seasonal depression in the middle of the year where I'm just really 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 low. My anxiety is kind of year round but my depression definitely takes a dip I think in the cooler months so I'm trying really hard to counteract it I'm trying to get outside in the sunny days I'm definitely gonna go for a walk today just to try and get a little bit of like you know vitamin D it really helps with mood I'm trying to make sure that I'm not pushing friends away I went and had a lovely lunch actually yesterday with some friends and that was amazing I tell you what vlogging really does help me a lot like talking to you guys on camera really does lift my mood I actually felt pretty crap this morning but I was like no I have to film my favorites because I have to go up tomorrow 
and I just kind of like had an ounce of motivation to push myself to do it and now I actually feel a lot better having sat down and chatted with you guys and actually this week I haven't started my weekly vlog it's it's um what is it Thursday I haven't actually started my weekly vlog because I'm doing more of a focused weekly vlog mainly over the weekend it's got kind of more of a specific focus for next week's vlog and I've actually noticed a huge change where just because I'm not showing you guys like little bits of my day each day, I'm feeling a lot more isolated and a lot more lonely and a little bit more stressed. So I don't know if this was necessarily a good decision. It was good to like try it out, but I think it's a kind of important for me to at least check in with the camera every day, even if I don't use the footage in my vlog, even if it's just kind of like a video diary and it's just somewhere for me to talk. Um, otherwise I might go days without talking, honestly, <laughs> if I'm like living by myself. So yeah. Just wanted to be real, this is what's happening for me. Oh, that's right, I do actually have one other fashion favourite I want to talk about, and it's this little spotty dress. Let me grab it. Chopo let me pick out a couple of items to try out, and I've been doing a bit of work on my Instagram with them. This is one of the pieces I selected. It's a cute little mini dress, and it's sort of something that maybe like a few years ago I absolutely would have jumped at. And this time I was like, oh, is that me? I'm not sure. Just because it's short, and I typically like to cover my legs, I love like maxi dresses and things. But actually it's really really nice, it's very flattering because it's a little bit flouncy around the bottoms. I just feel a bit more comfortable having that little bit of volume before my legs come poking out the bottom. <laughs> I thrashed it in Perth, I wore it like four out of the six days or so that I was there. Now when I look at this dress it's created a bit of a memory of like me and Alex together so it's like really special. I have a book favourite of the month as well, this is a really weird one so don't laugh. But it's called No Drama Discipline, it's actually a parenting book which you might be like why are you reading a parenting book, Anna? Do you have something to tell us? No, I'm not pregnant. My mum is a counsellor and she is reading it for her own like counselling knowledge building. But I tell you what, it is such a valuable book to read. If you're a parent, absolutely highly recommend reading it. I'd say it's a really good like nurturing model of discipline and I think uh, I grew up in the era where like smacking was still okay and even then I think my parents were doing the best they could with the knowledge they had at the time. By doing more research and reading around this topic, the more wisdom we can gain, the better we can do our job. Now for me obviously I'm not a parent at the moment but I am a teacher. I teach violin. I have to often mentor students. I've actually applied a lot of these principles in my teaching. I don't discipline my students as such but like it can be very easy as a teacher to get like frustrated if a student is just maybe giving off an attitude like they don't care or perhaps they haven't been practicing or um, they can't get something right. It can be very easy to have a quite a reactive response to that and get frustrated but that actually is really detrimental to the student. I've had teachers do that to me and um, they've shamed me, they've made me feel kind of like crap and it's not even like they're trying to do that, it's just their natural response and I really 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 don't want to be that kind of teacher. Like my goal is to be a really nurturing, encouraging, empathetic teacher that is really just helping the student on their goal rather than like dictating to them what they should do, if that makes sense. I want to cultivate a really well-formed brain in my students and that's what this book talks about. It talks about how to use the whole brain. I also found it really interesting for myself, my own personal development as someone that suffers from anxiety. When I am having an anxious moment or I'm suffering with my anxiety badly, I'm using my reactive part of my brain, my primitive part of my brain, the fight flight sort of symptoms. That's how children react you see to these sort of situations. That's why children throw tantrums or cry because they don't know any other response. So they just do this automatic kind of primitive response. This book teaches us as parents to try and connect those lower reactive part of the brains to the higher cognitive thinking part of the brain and to build that connection and I think when you are suffering with anxiety, that connection's been slightly severed. And I know that for me, I'm getting better and better and better at using my sort of cognitive part of my brain to sort out problems, like when problem solving. But occasionally, if I'm sleep deprived, if I'm hungry, if I'm cold, it doesn't always connect, you know, and I can feel myself sometimes getting into that primitive part of the brain. As an adult, I'm self-aware enough to be like, I shouldn't be acting like this, but I kind of can't help it. And I couldn't, for years, I struggled to understand why I was so incompetent and it made me feel more crap about myself. But like reading this book, it just makes me aware, I guess, of how my childhood development, you know, from experiencing the approach to parenting that my parents had and my teacher's influence over me, how all of that has contributed to the development of my brain as an adult and how I'm just missing a few connections or my connections are weaker than they perhaps would ought to be in their prime so I'm really working on trying to build that connection so that I can react to situations with a little bit more clear focus and less ah! if you suffer from anxiety I would honestly recommend this book it might seem off topic but I find wisdom in the weirdest places 
honestly, with reading materials and things. I'll stumble across something that has absolutely no relation, but I'll find a connection and it helps me to understand myself and the world a little bit better. And I have one last favorite. Favorite plant of the month. We are talking about my Swiss cheese vine. So this is a cousin of the Swiss cheese plant. They're really cool. I got this at a plant sale a while ago. Mine came to me in not the best condition. You can see there's a bit of damage to like the lower leaves. Um, some of the leaves that have come out since I've owned them are looking a little bit more healthy. Perhaps getting a little bit dry. I might need to increase the humidity a bit, but he is just like sprouting a new leaf every week. I love vines so much. Very similar to my pothos. You can see that I'm using these little clear 3M hooks just to kind of train him to hang up there. So that is my favorite plant of the month. <laughs> yeah, I think that pretty much wraps up my favorites. I quite liked the style where I'm like doing a bit of makeup and then showing you guys my fashion favorites and then just sitting down and chatting to you about like what's been happening for me and favorite other things and I hope you enjoyed it as well. My next video is my next weekly vlog which as I say is a little bit more focused around a specific topic but it does work I think as a vlog or at least I hope it will. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you then. Bye!